Welcome to the poster presentation of my research, Rocks for Crops, the agricultural usage of rock powders in the context of soil health. So within the One Health Nexus, the environmental health sphere is currently underrepresented. A major part of environmental health is soil health, since soils store and purify water, they cycle nutrients, they host a quarter of our planet's biodiversity, and contribute to climate resilience. And more essentially, the health of people and animals depends on healthy food grown on healthy soils. However, soils are a non-renewable resource and there is an alarming global degradation of soils that threatens food security and the fulfillment of several sustainable development goals. A key challenge is to replenish nutrients extracted with every harvest while maintaining soil health in an economically feasible way, especially for already infertile soils in developing countries. One way to do this could be the application of rock powders, which is used since ancient times to improve soils. Many rocks contain several nutrient elements essential for plant growth and, as a quick reminder, soils basically form by the weathering by the breaking up and dissolution of rocks. There is, however, little research and results are contradictory. They're contradictory because if you look at the second picture, the central process is the rock powder dissolution and thereby the release of the essential nutrients. This is, however, a complex process that is dependent upon several factors like the plant type, the soil type, and foremost, the rock type and the particle size. So most previous studies had a single discipline approach and focused, for example, on the geology and single rocks or on yield and crop growth only. So there are different aims of my study, but one aim presented here is the comprehensive review of how rock powders can contribute to soil health. To do this, 51 studies that used rock powder in agriculture were reviewed according to 16 soil health indicators. The indicators range from yield to soil pH and specific nutrient supply. Now to the results. Picture 3, or the table 3, summarizes the effects of rock powders on soil health. You see 16 horizontal bar charts, one for each soil health indicator, the blue bar shows how many papers reported a beneficial effect on this indicator and the orange one how many papers reported insignificant effects. From the graph, several things can be concluded. First of all, contradictory effects have been confirmed. There is, however, a significant positive trend for several indicators such as yield, K, so potassium supply, which is one of the most important plant elements, and soil pH, which is one of the master variables in soils. Furthermore, and opposed to classical fertilizers, rock powders can have a broad spectrum of benefits, but many of them are rarely measured, such as indicators on the lower end of the graph, which are only been measured three times. It is, however, also important that the beneficial effects outlined in the papers do not yet imply agronomic effectiveness or economic effectiveness because this is dependent on the costs of the rock, of the grinding process and the transport. But oftentimes rock powders arise as a waste product from the mining industry in huge quantity worldwide and could thus be reused for little or no money. So to conclude, Natural rock powders can improve soil health and have the greatest potential where they are actually the needed most, namely on infertile tropical soils in developing countries where classical fertilizers are often not affordable nor suitable. They are also compliant with the rising fertilizer demand for organic agriculture. And finally, multidisciplinary research is needed in the future to further specify which rocks for which crops on which soils. Thank you very much.